You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for September 28th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we know the punchline to a Jesuit, a dirty hippie, and the president of the ABA walk into a bar. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. That's the American Bar Association. Yeah, I I put ABA because bar and then walk into a bar is redundant. It takes away from the jokiness of the joke. So, see, I'm a professional. Don't try this at home. Don't try I know this what I'm at doing. Home. You don't. We are here. We are here. We are here. And we love you. And this has been a very rough week. Yes, it has. This testimony, and, and I think we just have to start with this, and maybe we'll finish with this, opened a lot of wounds for people. It did. Not just those who are survivors of sexual assault, although we are discovering, as the course of this week has unfolded, that uh, so many people who have kept something under wraps for years. Mm-hmm. And uh, Alyssa Milano had, was at a protest today outside the Supreme Court building and asked, how many of you are survivors of sexual assault? And hundreds of hands went up. Yeah. Uh, it is not an uncommon thing. No. And uh, it reminds me... A lot. This week reminds me a lot of the week a uh, year and a half ago when the Affordable Care Act was about to go under, and it was John McCain's th- thumbs down. Right, that was it. That saved the Affordable Care Act from just being shredded. You know, not not being messed with because that's still happening, but being completely shredded right before your eyes. Uh, this is we are in a battle with a political party the base of which enjoys watching women suffer. Yes. Period. Mm -hmm. Likes to punch down. And they are represented uh, perfectly by a president who likes to watch uh, people who are not him and not of his his immediate family suffer. Uh, It's sadism. Mm -hmm. And uh, you saw yesterday... uh, you know, it's it's not bad enough that Judge Kavanaugh has told a, the same proportion of lies in the time that he has been in the public eye as Donald Trump. Well, he he has told enough lies in one sitting to mm-hmm. disqualify ten women from the Supreme Court. Exactly, exactly. And his treatment of Amy Klobuchar, I really want to focus on that because that was that was an abuser. Right there. Anyone who has been through that kind of relationship, that kind of belligerence from a man, uh, he wouldn't have talked to any man on that panel like he talked to her. He bit back at another Democratic senator. It might have been White House, Uh uh, but it was like, I know you are, but what am I? Uh. He he did. I mean, but it's, it's absolutely the abusive behavior of, of an abuser, an <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, of of I'm no. Maybe you're maybe you're the problem. Maybe you're the liar. Yeah. And it, it's automatic. He skins back his teeth, and the fangs come out, and it's like fuck you, man. This is my goddamn job, and this bitch is trying to take it away from me. Maybe you're the blackout drunk. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're the liar. Maybe you're the loser. And you can just see it pop right out. Like oh yeah, I want that sitting on a federal bench. Yep. Uh, the highest court in the land. Absolutely for the next disqualifying years. performance. Yep. Absolutely yep. disqualifying. And mm-hmm. uh, the fact that it's not at this point, I think, is entirely attributable to the Republicans just deciding they're going to go down this slide with Donald Trump no matter what. Yeah. Yes, they are. Uh, and he, <laughs> the other thing he did was blame the Clintons, sure. which is a sure way to get Donald Trump to just you know, ride or die with you. That's it. You're my guy now because you went after the Clintons. Again, disqualifying. Yeah. When, you, when you become that partisan as a judge right in front of everyone, mm-hmm. uh, you're done. 
I, I think he was done the minute he went on Fox News. That's unprecedented and partisan. Well, and when he lied about uh, the Democratic uh, materials that were leaked to him, when he lied about yeah. his presentation yeah. and prep work for mm-hmm. uh, Ken Starr. And it, he hid all of that those that paperwork it's all, as well. They're in black yeah. and white. It's all on the record. He's he lied about he lied he lies very casually about a whole lot of shit. And he went from I'm a choir boy who uh, never touched alcohol in my life, never touched a woman, never never touched myself until I was thirty. To yep. yeah, I like beer. Yeah, I got drunk sometimes. So what? Maybe you got drunk too. Maybe you're a blackout drunk. I remember everything. I busted my ass. And he, in in this literally in the span of one testimony uh he went he did he did a donald trump started off in one absolutely fixed position this is where i stand completely reversed it under oath and but that's cool because you're a privileged white asshole and so are we all so don't worry man we'll cover your ass he, he the senate is doing for him exactly what his friends did for him in high school and college mm-hmm. covered mm-hmm. up for him lied for him covered the, his tracks for him bullshitted for him to get him through the door and that's what he has come to expect as his natural right as a privileged white Republican asshole. Yeah. And that and that's what I saw all week. And I yeah, uh I we are really pretty clearly all one degree of separation from someone who's been uh, abused or assaulted sexually. At 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 the very most. Absolutely. This is something that I do have to work on myself, um, which I think I'm doing as, with as much success as one can, because it's all about me, as you know, Blue Guy. <laughs> Um, I really am angry all the time now. I'm not yeah, like screaming, yeah. punching the wall angry, but I'm like, no, whatever it takes to burn the Republican Party to the fucking ground and, and bury it at the crossroads with a stake through its heart forever, I'm down for that. Mm-hmm. Sign me up for that. Mm-hmm. What, do, what do you need me to do? Whose door do you need me to knock on? What do you need me to call? I have no money, so I can't, you know, I can't buy a senator for you, but – um what do you need me to do to help that cause along? Because this must all end. Mm-hmm. To quote Kate from The Godfather, this must all end. It all must end. Well, this was a big week for our sponsor, Hello Fascist, as you know. Yes, it was. Now, are you personally a Republican senator from Texas who's running for reelection and is more universally loathed than the Phantom Menace? <laughs> are you so hated by decent people that you get run out of restaurants? Well, the good people at Hello Fascist are on a mission to provide every Republican Google and enabler in America with fresh home cooked meals with no planning, no shopping, and no one calling you out for your moral depravity in public. Hello Fascist, because those people are definitely peeing in your food, Senator Cruz. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> what you're tasting in your food, um, I think that if anyone could play Hugo Weaving's role as well as Hugo Weaving, it would be Ted Cruz <laughs> in the in, in rake. rake opening sort of episode a, of Rake a, we watched the other night. Yep, yep. A a a a small government Milton Friedman economist who's also a cannibal. <laughs> I'm like, that's perfect. It's nice how you wove that in there. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was really good. It was really good. It was really good. Hey, uh, Drift Glass, you you sent you made me laugh. You son of a bitch. Yes, I did. You did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't want you to do that. I know, but. Uh, yesterday you sent a tweet that said on this week's pro left podcast, we will be hiring a female assistant to interact with blue gal because the optics of me having a spirited conversation with my amazing wife would be terrible. It would be terrible. terrible. You know know what the joke in there is? We have a podcast, so there's no optics, you know? So, Hey, Hey, (laughs) Hey, didn't think it through. Did I? No, I didn't. I was drunk. What do you want? Yeah, misogyny beard LLC yeah. is what you're calling yes. it. Yeah. That's that. <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't work very no. well. No. Well, you know, and and she was from Maricopa County. I did love what Brian Williams said last night. She's from Maricopa County. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it, the thing is that she was only given these five minute increments right and no to make prep. it fair and no prep there's no there's no right. folder nobody handed her you know background information or case right. information right and so she's trying to re- build rapport and get information and here is this incredibly well-educated put together articulate mm-hmm. cooperative yeah. witness yeah. And this is the thing that over and over again yesterday when when the commentary was going on and they had these women former prosecutors on, all of them were saying, look, 
we've all had sexual assault cases yeah. in our courtrooms. Yeah. We've all had to deal with this. It's horrible. It's it's uh, you know traumatizing to hear some of this testimony. Mm -hmm. But you don't always get a PhD in psychology no. to come before the court the court and give testimony and be cooperative and tell you what she remembers and what she doesn't and why her brain remembers that. Mm -hmm. She's also an expert witness on psychology of memory. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what you get often is someone that has a drug problem right. because she's been abused. Right. Hello. Or so, some other situation where, you know, the the defense of her abuser can come in and say, well, you know, she's undergone mental health treatment. She's done this. All kinds of ways to just make her less credible as a witness. Yeah. And there was none of that. And then, of course... When Kavanaugh comes on, it's like all of the Republicans on the committee have had that uh, men in black flashlight beamed on their head. Yeah. Well, we don't remember anything about this morning. Yeah, you know, I, I heard that there was like a witness there, but we're just listening to Kavanaugh now, right on the merits. And suddenly, you know, all these white men found their voices. Yeah. They said, thanks, lady. We don't need you right. anymore. Our guy's up to bat. So uh, here's your 20 bucks and a cab fare to the airport. Thanks for all your help. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And then yep. they got they got on, back to the important business of of, of lathering him up. Mm -hmm. And and uh, in, in the case of uh, Lindsey Graham, uh, going on hysterical, bug-eyed, screaming tirades about how Democrats always do this. Rehearsed. And how, Rehearsed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's, he, he, you know what? He really is a crisis actor. Crisis actor. He, he, Lindsey Graham doesn't believe a fucking thing, except he doesn't want anyone prying his closet open right. and mentioning what's inside. So Lindsey Graham, back when he was the floor manager for the impeachment of Bill Clinton, mm -hmm. wanted to spare no expense, and there was no amount of time that was too lengthy to remove Clinton from office. That was his goal. Right. Yeah. And he, and he preferred if he just resigned because mm -hmm. because of all this nonsense. But if we have to dig through every swamp in fucking Arkansas for the next five years, then by God, we're going to do it. And now same Lindsey Graham, uh, different suit, slightly different haircut, different title. Now he's no longer in the House. Now he's in the Senate. Now it's hysterical in the hall, out of the hall. Again, bug eyed, shrieking. We're going to get you sons of bitches. And I, I just, I went back to 2016 today mm -hmm. and looked up Lindsey Graham's, because I, I remember this, but it was only 2016. It was less than, or it was just two years yeah. ago that Donald Trump was calling uh, Lindsey Graham dumb, dumbest yeah. guy he'd ever met and crazy and just useless and a piece of shit. Lindsey Graham went on The Daily Show. Lindsey Graham said, went, went in front of the uh, a, a voting forum. He did, he did a roast. Mm -hmm. And he said, the reason my party is the way it is now, this is before Ted Cruz dropped out. Right. This is when Lindsey Graham was absolutely goddamn sure that the person who was going to be the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue was going to be Hillary Clinton. Right. As with all the other fucking never Trumpers, he, he went long on, my party is definitely going to lose. Therefore, I'm going to position myself as the smart one in the opposition. And then I can go tell everyone I told you so. And block so every went, Supreme Court uh, nomination that she has yeah, for four years. Yeah, that's my plan. And and he um, said the reason my party is where it is is because they, they're they bug fuck crazy. Mm -hmm. Is because they're a bunch of crazy people. And and he just, he lit into his party. He he took out Paul Ryan, who was at the roast and said, you know, you're smart, you're you're clever, you know the budget, you're a dead man walking in our party, Paul. And then he turns to Nancy Pelosi and says, Nancy, please never leave politics. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. you're the reason my party still exists. Mm -hmm. They're basically hating you is the only thing holding us together. Well, but, but they would Lindsay pick Graham, someone else. They'd pick another woman if it wasn't her. Sure. Sure. But this was, again, the context of the roast. It was yeah. Lindsey Graham saying the, the, our country and our party is in really big trouble because Hillary Clinton's going to win. And the reason she's going to win is, is that our party is fucked in the head. Mm -hmm. And that basically Donald Trump is, is, the, is the cancer actually bursting through the skin. Yeah. Yeah. And then Trump won. And then Trump and won. And now the same guy is down on all fours, ass in the air, saying, yes, sir, yes, sir. Whatever you want to do, man. Whatever you want to do with me, go ahead and fucking do it. As long as you don't abuse me in public and maybe make me your attorney general once you get rid of that Sessions fella. I will do whatever the fuck you want. Mm -hmm. Lindsey Graham is that guy. And Lindsey Graham should have been buried with John McCain. 
because yep. whatever the hell shred of dignity he had, John McCain clearly kept in his pocket. Mm -hmm. And that's gone now. Mm -hmm. And and that's the party. This is the party. This is the, the a bunch of really creepy old white men mm -hmm. uh, ignoring a woman who has a, 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 a credible story, who's an incredibly good witness, as you already pointed out, and just deciding beforehand, fuck it, we're going with this guy. And now we today, we're recording this on Friday. Um, uh, Jeff Flake said he'd be more comfortable uh, if we could just, you know, have an FBI, a one-week FBI investigation. Right. Right. Which puts it in Mitch McConnell's lap and Donald Trump's lap. And apparently and, McConnell is going along with it. So, well, great. That's you know, fine. We, we That's didn't know that at the time, but, no. you know, you got to figure that he, did, I, he didn't have the votes. So he can't. There was nothing about this party that I trust. No, I don't trust nothing. anyone. Nope. Nope. Uh, there's a couple, I, I do want to just get back to gender for a minute. Um, Absolutely. cause that's what this is all about. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jessica Valenti, who I don't always, uh, agree with, but, uh, mm -hmm. she, the, the tweets that she sent in the past week, uh, one was how do bad men actually, she wrote a whole, whole article, how do bad men get away with rape? Good men pave the way. And that mm -hmm. she hopes rape survivors confront Jeff Flake in public for the rest of his life. Yep. Uh, he he was confronted in the Senate elevator today by a rape survivor and that, saying that this whole process is denying her reality. Uh, <laughs> made him really uncomfortable. Hey, you yes. should be uncomfortable. Yes. Uh, another woman, um, Alexander Petrie, talked about... Uh, Dr. Ford's testimony and said, is this how people get to talk? Oh, excuse me. This is the Kavanaugh testimony. Is this how people get to talk if they don't spend their entire lives being scrutinized for tone? Yep. Um, and then uh, Iva Dixit on Twitter, I-V-A-D-I-X-I-T, said uh, something that just really uh, kicked me in the tummy. Uh Small acts of sexism in everyday life are exhausting, as it were. But watching the wildly different standards play out on the highest scale like this, the woman has to be perfect, acquiescing to be taken seriously while the shouty man is forgiven everything, has robbed me of all hope. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine what it is like to be a black woman. I just, I can't imagine it. And I see this week um, really smacking a lot of us in the face, <laughs> a lot of us mm -hmm. white women in the face and saying, mm -hmm. get it now, <laughs> you know, get yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, this is what misogynist, racist power looks like when it comes for you and wants you gone. Wants you erased. And uh, it has been incredibly emotional for all of us. I had a colleague today say, I just need to go to a mental hospital for about three days. And I said, ditto. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's hard. It's hard to go to bed at night. It's hard to, um, you know, digest your food. It, this is hard. And it's also... Um, searing resolve into my bones <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> of I'm not going to be nice anymore. You know, this, no. we're not going to be nice about this. This is not about uh, anyone who wants to talk about tone and civility needs to watch Kavanaugh again and how he talked well, to Senator Klobuchar. And all the same people want to talk about tone and civility, yep. all the same people. Yep. Uh, some, somewhere on, uh, on, on the social media uh, in the last couple of days, the days are kind of blurring together a little bit. Mm -hmm. But um, someone of some note and renown was asking, was pointing out that this feels different. You know, after the election, it was um, sort of shock and couldn't breathe. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. real, white hot, unquenchable, focused rage. Mm -hmm. What happened? And I and I thought, and I thought, I said, well, this is. Uh, what's called in the shooting world a double tap. This is two shots to the same target in rapid succession. Hmm. This is Hillary Clinton 
got fucked out of her job by a bunch of old white bigots. Mm -hmm. She got bulldozed aside. She, she had to be absolutely perfect. She made a few mistakes. She tried really hard. She was incredibly well qualified. She presented herself in public extremely well. And nonetheless, the same old boys club that it wants to shove um, Dr. Ford aside, shoved her aside, mocked her, sneered at her. Trump was raging all over the stage and stalking her on the stage and rolling his eyes and doing everything that if she had done it once, she would have been a dead candidate walking. And he got away with it and he got away with it and he got away with it. And that's why this reminds me um, creepily of 19, uh, 2004, 2005. Um, Abu Ghraib. Mm -hmm. when, when, the pre when it slowly started to dawn on the media that not only had we been lied into the wrong war and it was bankrupting the country and we were losing and everything the Bush administration had told us was a lie, but we were torturing mm -hmm. people. We were torturing a lot of people. We had, we're torturing people in black sites that were, are all completely illegal, that were set up uh, completely under the radar. And we were, we were absolutely fucking torturing people as a matter of national policy. Mm -hmm. and, and the same hand fluttering people who were like, oh my God, can you believe this? were equally shocked to discover that Republicans were completely cool with it. Mm -hmm. They liked it. Yep. Republicans like torturing people. They get off on the idea that somewhere in some cell, someplace, someone who has a, 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 a last name that's Muslim is getting the shit beaten out of them in their name. They love that shit. They love that shit. This is what drives them. This kind of visceral, tribal, lizard hatred of other people is the only thing holding that party together. And it was really, the, the media really freaked out when it wasn't a matter of national outrage. It was a matter of, oh, you mean Sean Hannity thinks it's fun? You mean Rush Limbaugh thinks it's cool? Mm -hmm. You mean a whole bunch of Republicans are really okay with this and think, hey, that's good. Torture them more. Well, and they're what? good with Putin stealing. I mean, Putin's one of the old guys that yeah. you're talking about. And and right. so yeah. so it was Julian Assange and so it was a whole lot of other people. It's not just mm -hmm. Republicans in the in the Congress. No. Um, this is a white male patriarchy backlash. That's what this is. Yeah. And and it it's the thing that's is so for me, because I don't, you know, I'm I'm a middle aged white guy. Yeah. So I I know people who have been um abused. Yep. I have relatives who have been abused. Mm -hmm. um, I I can uh, sympathize. I can empathize, but I, I can't really know what that feels like. I can just know what it feels like when, when those people cry on my shoulder. Right. Um, and be extraordinarily angry at whoever it was that did this and want them dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yep. But yep. It's, it's a matter of watching the same elite, both siderist, Beltway, Acela Corridor, media assholes reacting over and over again with complete surprise every time the Republican Party shows us who they really are. How many more times does the party of Donald Trump and the party of Newt Gingrich and the party of Rush Limbaugh need to show you, put right up in your face that they're a hateful bunch of bigots and assholes who are perfectly okay with torturing and killing people who they don't like because they like doing it? Yeah. They want, I mean, how many more liberal conservatives do you need to hear that I love liberal tears? I live for liberal tears. I want to drink your liberal tears. Well, you know what, motherfucker? We're going to drown you in liberal tears. Mm -hmm. We're going to drown mm -hmm. you and your whole party in liberal tears because it it is just exhausting that the people who are supposed to be the sentinels of the First Amendment, the guardians of the free press, cannot form their mouth to say the words the problem with this country is the republican party and it, it every single time every fucking time this happens the papers are suddenly full of it this week the, today it was se cup and brett stevens and andrew sullivan isn't it a shame how both sides were just unbelievably you know reckless and isn't it a shame how the democrats and republicans are equally tribal um chris christie this morning why, why anyone put a camera on this asshole, I don't know. But, you know, both parties are exactly the same, Blue Gal. Yeah. They're exactly yeah, the that's same. That's Chris Christie, absolutely. And no, asshole, one party is out of its fucking mind and trying to destroy this country. And when that happens, when, when the press just steps aside and says, well, we're not going to get in the middle of this, 
Um, they destroy everything in sight, and someone has to stop them. Mm-hmm. Someone has to make them pay and push them back into the sewer and stop them. When we don't step up and put a boot on their throat and say, stop it right now. You can't wreck this country any further. We won't permit it. When, when we don't do that, it's why won't Barack Obama lead? Mm-hmm. Why won't Obama lead from the same assholes who will turn around once we start to lead saying, isn't it a shame how both sides are so tribal and mean and so unreasonable? Right now, David Brooks is on a three-month tour of this country at elite, mostly religious institutions and colleges talking about humility and civility. And isn't it a shame how both sides are terrible? Mm-hmm. And that's what exhausts me, that those people are fucking indestructible. It doesn't matter how many times we hit them over the head with the fact that both sides are not the same, that this is a war and there's a good guy in this war and there's a bad guy in this war and they should goddamn well pick a side. They will never do it. And they, they're, there's no way to get a crowbar under Andrew Sullivan's ass and pry him loose from the wingnut welfare teat yep. that's keeping him alive. Uh, Drift Glass, let's anyway. uh, read down the news just to get through some of the stuff that we might have missed. I can't believe that it was last weekend uh-huh. that the five Miami-Dade, quote unquote, average Republican women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those those are- who are all candidates for office, office holders, members of the executive board of the Republicans Women's Club of Dade County, all of them professional within the Republican Party. Right. And they are brought on CNN as a panel of average Republican women voters. Such as yourself. Who all want Kavanaugh to be confirmed, of course, and support the president 100% in this. This is, of course, we're going to do this. And what are they talking about? This happened in high school for crying out loud, for cry eye. You know, and then you find out, of course, it doesn't take long for uh, Twitter to find out that who these women are. No. And this was... Uh, just laziness on the part of CNN producers. I, I, I don't think so. I would, you think, I would well, now, it's either laziness or it's an insistence that we must find a yes. reasonable opposite position on rape. Yes. Jeff Zucker yeah. and the, the, the yeah. minions he employs to put on the puppet show at CNN mm-hmm. have a script that they're going to follow. They have the here. We're going to put on a panel discussion full of women who think this is perfectly reasonable, who are reasonable, just ordinary Republican housewives such as yourself. Mm-hmm. I run my own business. I run a shoe shop. I I'm a, I'm work at the bank. I raise my kids. We Just central casting. Get me five women who are average Republican women. And it doesn't really matter if that's a lie. That's what they're going to tell you that they're there's because the story is already written. The right. story that they're goddamn well going to tell is already written. Selena Zito has made a fortune doing this, walking around the country, talking about the 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 plight of the 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 uh, blue collar worker in America. Mm-hmm. What, mm-hmm. what I call magic ruralism. Yep. The story of the struggling Trump voter who's who's not really racist. He's just economically anxious. And sure, it's like, yeah. nah, he's a fucking racist. Pretty much every single time. But there is a fictional narrative that our media is desperate to maintain because I swear to God, if if the real story were ever just reported that no, these are these are paid Republican women who are coming on here that we've hired to come on here to tell you that rape is okay because my producer says I have to. It's mm-hmm. not the news. No one thinks this is true. We we made this shit up, but if we don't put this on the air, the wing nuts in our audience will riot and we'll lose third of our advertisers that's the truth that's mm-hmm. the actual reason we're doing this but we're going to pass it off as news because you know we are we're cnn technically we're a news company that's what i, I swear is happening because it can't they can't keep failing in the same exact way over and over again by accident right right it's a pattern it's a it's definitely it's a, a, pattern. It's a script yeah. and and they're yeah. going to keep running it until someone makes them stop George Papadopoulos, this this really made me laugh. Puppy boy and noted drunkard George Papadopoulos yeah. uh, really tried to punch out of his weight class this week. Mm-hmm. And he got killed. Uh, George Papadopoulos went on Twitter to address Michael Hayden and said, when Obama's former CIA director attacks you on Twitter over the truth, you know you're unco- you've uncovered a massive plot. And Michael Hayden replied, for the record, I was George W. Bush's CIA director. Obama fired me. Yeah. And then George Papadopoulos perished in a in a gale of Twitter laughter that's still echoing. <laughs> still <the> echoing. <laughs> oh, 
Uh, you know, there's this big Democrat leftist Clinton plot to undo Kavanaugh. We've been talking about that. It now includes the Jesuit Review, the American Bar Association, and the dean of the Yale Law School. Yeah. For Kavanaugh bragged and bragged and bragged that he got in because he worked his tail off. All known crazy leftist liberal leftist Clinton plotters got yeah Jesuits and lawyers and law uh-huh. school well teams. now the Jesuit review the Jesuit uh, America magazine just re- rescinded its endorsement of Kavanaugh yeah. and said just withdraw the nomination it's not in the best interest of the country's go away, go away. Uh, the dean and the American Bar Association asked for a postponement and they got it yeah so well, there you go yeah, they, this week we heard a lot about the benefit of the doubt mm-hmm. the Republicans mm-hmm. have, 20 years ago, the Republicans used up their last benefit of the doubt, get out of jail free card. But, but the did. media keeps giving to them. I have, I have nothing, I have no reason to believe these people at all. They, the, Mitch McConnell is a lying, scheming, li, uh, reptilian Thief. sack of shit. That's yeah. all he is. Yeah. That's all he's ever going to be. He, he's, he's, he, is, uh, uh, he is the wagon master of a party of, of imbeciles and bigots and lunatics and and right wing nut jobs, and he is, and he's got power, and mm-hmm. his his goal is to pack the court as tight as possible with as many lunatics as possible, so that so that once the whole thing falls apart, he'll still have a branch of government that he created, and to get as much stuff deregulated and as much taxes cut for rich people as possible, so that he and the rest of them can all go off to lobby land. Well, he doesn't have the votes. He doesn't have the votes at this point. That's why he has. That's why he. To come to this. He needs a week uh, to call every lobby shop in D.C. and say, call Jeff Flake and tell him to get on board or he doesn't have a job. Yep, because that's why Jeff Flake is behaving himself. Yes, uh, Lawrence O'Donnell tweeted that, that he wants the doors open at Lobby Central when he gets out of the Senate. Uh-huh. Okay, you, let's talk about the U.N. first, because that happened before the press conference. But Trump was busy this week being it's, crazy in front of a microphone. Yeah. Uh, and talking about his tremendous accomplishments before the U.N., where they laughed. Yeah. He then told um, the German delegation that they would be entirely dependent upon Russian fuel if they didn't get their act together and go against the Paris Accords. Yes. And the um, German, de- this was a German delegation. The German delegation laughed <laughs> at him. Uh, it, uh, he then had a uh, presser. You know, he asked the translator, you know, what does Scheisskopf mean? What is that word? Oh, it means a uh, brave, strong leader, uh, strong leader man. That's what it means. Really? I'm a, the biggest Scheisskopf you've ever seen. <laughs> no bigger Scheisskopf than me has ever existed on this earth. Maybe George You're Washington. the biggest Scheisskopf ever. Yeah. Yes, you yeah. are. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he continued his insanity uh, at a solo press conference. Yes, he did. Uh, which, again, the next day, no one continued to talk about. No one went 25th Amendment. No one everyone brought in the ambulance no. to carry him away. I mean, it was just crazy uncle crazy being crazy. And and then uh, today, after this uh, delay and the FBI investigation, here comes Lindsey Graham out in the hallway to talk to reporters. First of all, I loved it that Ali Vell, she went, ah, and here's Lindsey Graham. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but Lindsay said, someone's got to explain this to Trump. I guess it's going to be me. And I will I will tell you what he's going to say. He's going to say, you know, President Trump, if you had a decent attorney general, <laughs> you would have prepared for this. That, that Sessions fellow, I worked with him for years. I think he's got a bit of a drinking problem <laughs> and he's just and not very bright. So let me tell you, what you need is a tough, closeted, gay weirdo like myself <laughs> to get in there and get the job done. This shit wouldn't have been happening if it had been Attorney General Lindsey Graham yeah. and not Jefferson Beauregard, three feet tall and out of his fucking mind. I'm sorry. Trump Trump, and Putin both have pictures oh. of Lindsey Graham doing what we all know he does. So I mean, Everybody has pictures of Lindsey Graham. <laughs> Apparently. That's why he floats around like a balloon in a hurricane because yeah. everybody's got shit on Lindsey and they just push him any way they want. Uh, the only anchor, the, the little lead weight that kept him on the ground was, was uh, John McCain. Yeah. Now he's gone. Yeah. So Lindsay just flies around with the breeze. Uh, leaked emails show a Republican aide declined to take phone calls from Deborah Ramirez and her legal team, who alleges oh, no. that Kavanaugh exposed himself during to her during a party in college. Yes. Uh, you know, this this happened to a family member of mine as well. A family member involved uh, her parents who were very uh, understanding and would always believe her. She had a very supportive background uh, to her family. The older people in her family were very supportive. And 
uh, I'm struggling because I want to shield who this person is, but this person had someone expose themselves in a public place to her. Yep. And she went home and she told her parents and her parents said, we believe you. What do you want to do? Uh, we don't feel that, you know, going to court over this, you weren't, he didn't touch you in any way. We are not trying to diminish what happened, but, uh, you know, you understand there are weirdos who do this. And, and she said, I want to call the cops because I'm strong enough to know what happened. But, uh, if, if he did this to someone else who might not be strong enough, I want him to stop it. Yep. And, uh, this is a very small town, uh, called the cops. The cops, as she told me, thank God, came in a plain clothes with an unmarked car to the house, came in, interviewed her, went to the park, found the guy, talked to him. Uh, he, you know, had a heads up from the cop that we know that uh, there's a complaint about you on this and we've got an eye on you. Uh, and um, reported that back to my uh, relative. And uh, that was it. Uh, there, was, there was no further action taken, but she was grateful that she had said something. Uh, I don't know down the road, you know, if that would, I'm sure the cops did keep an eye on her. It was a very small town where this happened. Um, I, I, my friend or my rel relative thought this was the end of it. 15 minutes later, she gets a knock on her door and she was a teenager also. She was in high school. Uh, it gets a knock at her door and it's her neighbor. And her neighbor said, we heard on the scanner that you saw somebody expose themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there's no privacy in a small town and there are small town no. people listening to the police scanner inside their house, uh, who are going to be nosy about it. Yep. Uh, and that to me, that to me is kind of the cherry on the Sunday of that, which is, We've got to know, the men who do this have to know, this is going to go public. Yes. This is what Sheldon Whitehouse said. He said, you know, we can vote to confirm this guy. You guys can vote to confirm this guy. But what he did is going to come out. Yeah. It always finds a way yep. to come out. And there's always an institutional protection. I, I There is yeah. also in my family, and I'm not going to say anything more than that, in mm -hmm. a member of my extended family out to, you know, a million cousins from here, um, uh, was uh, sexually assaulted mm -hmm. uh, by under, underage by a member of the U.S. Postal Service. Yeah. Um, and again, was strong, had strong parents, um, mm -hmm. took it all the way to court. Uh, but honestly, the thing that made it possible to get it to court was the fact that another member of my extended family, fair to say, uh, had been a postmaster. Oh, okay. For many years and knew exactly what form to ask for from the HR department. Wow. Here's what you do. You go in, you say this and this and this and this, and you ask for this and this and this, because if you don't, they won't tell you. Wow. And you'll never find out because it was like, well, it was happened on his route, but it wasn't, you know, part of his duties. Yeah. So it's not on to us. To attack somebody. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, and, and, but it was. It's um, like having the secret words to know in a, um parent teacher conference when your child is special needs the magic yep. word, the magic yep. words yep. exactly you, if you don't know to say them you're not going to get what your child is due you're not going to get the nope. services you want unless you know what to say yeah but yeah. again it, it it's a small town and it's yep. very important that people you know like any other village know who the bad ones are yeah and yeah. know to protect their children from them and every, and their family and women and men from them mm -hmm. and that their their lives need to be significantly uh impaired with this yeah. knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. You know, these people need to as far as I'm concerned he's going to he's going to be wearing uh, a robe in probably a few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, but he should also be wearing a scarlet letter for the rest of his life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. and I, I have, I have zero confidence that will happen. I, I have seen people who I, I empathize with greatly that they'll be hell to pay this time and this time. And I, I really want that to be true. Let me, let me be very clear. I want that to be true. I door knock for my candidate. I mm -hmm. make phone calls. I'm very politically active. I want that to be true. And the reason I'm frightened is because I remember that in 2004, we were never, never going to let this happen again. Right. Never right. again we let these fucking monsters who nearly wrecked our country have a say over anything. And I look 
at my television. I look at I look at cable news. I look at uh, the uh, the uh, newspaper op ed columns. The 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 creators and and guardians of public opinion. Mm-hmm. And I see a whole bunch of Bush regime, unreconstructed Bush regime dead enders mm-hmm. who never got punished, who who never paid a price, who are all treated with absolute deference and respect, and who now control the public narrative, and yeah. or who are never Trumpers, who are supposed to be my, my very good friends. Right, they were supposed to have your back. They were supposed and to protect like, you. From, right, we right. You know, we tried really hard to stop this from happening. Yeah, um, documented it and streamed and jumped up and down. Why does Bill Crystal still have a fucking job? And it failed because the machinery of the media just doesn't listen to us, is not interested in what we have to say. They're interested in, in pushing their narrative, and their narrative is based on selling products right. to viewers and listeners and readers. And that's it. That's why they're in business. And anyway. and we had an offer this week to we uh, do some advertising uh, by putting out an additional podcast with a pre-recorded ad on it. Mm-hmm. Um, this this person that this group that wants us to do that is not uh, a bad group or someone no. No. inconsistent with our values. No, we appreciate but the attention. The amount of money that they were offering, like three hundred bucks or so, was not enough to make it. Well, now I can't say that because what if my advertiser doesn't like it? Yeah. And you know, we went through this with Amazon. We went through this with. Of, I'm not allowed to promote your product on my show when you're advertising on my show. Uh, I'm not supposed to say anything, and and it's just it is it's money comes in because people listen to us and they want to support the show. Well, also from Hello Fascist, the <laughs> the box meal All for people who can't go on public anymore. Advertisers are so no. supportive of our yeah. yes yes. We constantly. lost most of them to the good people at uh, in America. <laughs> Because of our, our salty di- – and boy, are they in for a surprise. Are they uh, in for a surprise? Who are they? Like, okay, who are these uh, – oh, we got all – we got, we stole all their advertisers. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, as long as we make a couple of – oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whoopsie doopsie. No, it's, it's, a friendly, it's a friendly banter there, guys. Don't, don't yeah. destroy us. Yeah. Please hey, don't destroy hey. us. Hey, you know, I, I just – I want to say to our listeners how much we love you guys. Oh, yeah. This is – and I've heard from several of you this week. We got a ton of internet kitties in the mail. Oh my God. Bless your heart. Thank yeah. you so much for that. And uh have heard from many of you this week about we I really need this show this week. I don't know, I'm gonna make mm. through. And uh you <laughs> you asked me yesterday when I was, you know, how many times a day in the past three days have I been sitting at my laptop near tears? Yep. Or at yep. in tears. And uh, are you sure you're going to want to do a show this week? Are you kidding me? Of course I'm going to want to do a show. We have to do a show. I want to talk to my friends out there. So, uh, yeah, you guys keep us going. So thank you for doing that. Uh, all right. I'll, I'll breeze through a few of these. Let's breeze through like. a few of these. Yeah. Uh, former National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster called it a wholly inappropriate for Gary Cohen to remove documents from Trump's desk. That uh, Cohen did not want uh, the U.S. pulling out of a trade agreement with South Korea, so he just took that paper off. Yeah, I'm just, he forgot and, about it. <laughs> and nobody noticed. That's nobody the part noticed. That freaks yeah. Me out. Like, oh, I guess we're going to still thing be. I'm pulling out there with South Korea. No, he yeah. didn't. If it's not put in front of him, he's not going to remember. The idea that there are layers and and levels of yeah. people who are vetting this shit, and and if if it goes untouched or unacted upon, someone will notice. And and no, it's just shit that's on my desk, and then it's not. Somebody thought it was a good idea, not anymore. That's how it's run like his business. It's run like his family business. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the last person who talked to him is the one that has his brain cells for that moment. And usually yeah. it's Hannity. Speaking uh, of welfare. Yeah. Farmers this week said that they're welfare checks. And that's what they are. Mm-hmm. They're welfare checks. Mm-hmm. From the Trump administration won't cover the loss of sales due to tariffs. Womp womp. They, so we knew that. knew that, and they knew that, so, and they were borrowing money from China so that we don't swill. We want to give money to farmers, so that they won't sell their product to China. That's what we're yeah. doing, yeah. and that that market will never come back because China's just going to grow those crops over in China. So, yep. yeah, we'll buy them from Brazil or buy them from Canada, somewhere else. else. Yep, run by a racist. You know, have an established China. established relationship, and that's where they'll get their product from now on. So. Uh, the Trump administration predicts the Earth's temperature will rise by 7 degrees Fahrenheit by the end of the century. Instead of using the analysis to fight climate change, the administration says, since we're screwed, let's party. This is smoker's logic. Yes, this is smoker's logic. This they is also are... Comp- ab- I'm sorry. 
Well, this is absolutely the logic of smokers. You go ahead. The, the, they also um, let go a couple of people from the uh, EPA, including the science manager. Yeah. Uh, they, no, we're just combining several departments. But what happened then is the person in charge of making sure that what's done at the EPA is according to science has been let go. Yeah, they, they, they took the science guy off of Trump's desk and no one noticed he was gone. <laughs> exactly. So, womp womp. Uh, smoker's logic is very simple. This is this is the logic of every smoker who hasn't quit. Yeah. It's it won't hurt me. It won't hurt me. Okay, it's hurting me a little bit. Okay, it's not good for me, but it's not great for me. Well, eh, whatever. Something's going to kill you anyway. And then they find out that they have six months to live. Well, fuck it. I'm already dead anyway. So let's just keep smoking. Yeah. Yeah. And at no point in the entire arc of that argument are they willing to say the action I'm taking now is destructive and maybe I should stop. Mm-hmm. It's very uh, very hard to quit. Yes. But it's also that's climate change logic. Yeah. That is yeah. the logic of every Republican. Yeah. Look, something's going to kill us already. You know, not, I'm going to die anyway. I want to die in air conditioned comfort at you know in a in a retirement home or at my home with every one of my needs being waited on, uh lording it over brown people and women and liberals. And if you have to burn the planet down to make my last years comfortable, go ahead and do it cuz fuck the future. What's the future ever done for me? Well, and I think it's the stock market and what they own in fossil fuel properties, you know, and yeah. and military industrial complex properties. So I want to see David Brooks investment portfolio. Mm-hmm. Me too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. The House Intelligence <laughs> Committee will vote Friday to release dozens of interview transcripts from the now defunct Russia investigation because that's a really good idea. It's now defunct. Yes. The the important word there is it's the the now defunct yeah. Russian investigation of the House Intelligence Committee. Devin Nunez is going to release his own memos and interview transcripts. OK, we'll see if we can count the lies in our spare time. Yeah. Uh, Don Jr.'s would be interesting. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. The death by 1000 tweets of Rod Rosenstein has been postponed for a week. So Trump can strong arm Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Mike Pence spoke at a conference hosted by a group designated as an anti-LGBT hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center. He's the very first vice president to address the Value Voters Summit. And last year, Donald Trump became the first sitting president to do so. So you know who their people are. Yeah, and and it was also the return of Michelle Bachman, who I swear to God, I wrote wrote this up and I just, the title of the post was, she just did the next SNL cold open because <laughs> it was so bizarre. It was, it's a golden time. This is our golden time. Mm-hmm. And everybody said, you mean golden showers time, Michelle? Cause yeah, we got that. They got the tape. She, she was pulling statistics out of her ass. 93% of conservative voices on, on social media have been silenced. 93%. Uh, yeah. Bill Cosby is going to jail, yeah. is in jail. That's uh, an actual positive thing. And, you know, yeah. if you'd asked me back when I was 10 years old, listening to Noah and mm-hmm. to my brother, Russell, um, I, this is an undreamed of future. But yeah. this is an actual example where a real monster masquerading as a, a decent human being got caught, went to court, and is now going to go to jail. Mm-hmm. And, and and his lawyer decided to hold up Brett Kavanaugh and Dr. Cosby, as he put it, uh, as compatriots in the injustice system that's being put upon them. Well, yeah. you, know, okay. you know who else injustice was done to, Blue Gal? Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. No, no he's yeah. just like Jesus. He's being crucified just like our Lord Jesus uh-huh. Christ. Uh-huh. Wow. Okay. okay. Yeah. You, you, you earned your fee then, Mr. Attorney. A new Trump administration rule will make it more difficult for immigrants to obtain green cards if they legally use public benefits like food stamps or Medicaid. So if they get their kids their shots yep. and feed them, they might not be able to get a green card. That's how they're okay. sadists. They're fucking sadists. And and yep. either you're down with that or you're not. That's the dividing line. That really is. It's you know We mm-hmm. can disagree about how policies get done and who gets what and how much and what the tax rate should be. But either you're a sadistic asshole or you're not. That's really it's, it's just well, and if you are a sadistic asshole, thinks that's a good idea. I hope some unimmunized immigrant kid coughs on you yeah. the next time you're in a big box store because the air recirculates throughout that whole place, and uh, you know there's going to be some sort of superbug that comes out, mm-hmm. and the uninsured that you decided didn't deserve insurance 
are going to infect you. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. It's it, it's selfish to want everyone to have insurance. That is a selfish move. Yeah. It is in everyone's interest to make sure everyone has their shots, everyone has access to immunizations and healthcare and and uh, checkups to make sure that they're not carrying a communicable disease that will go to you good Christian white people. Mm-hmm. Well, back right. during the depths of the Bush administration, mm-hmm. I've mentioned this once or twice before, I, I attended a, a conference. My job sent me to conferences, and I attended a conference where Bill Clinton was the keynote speaker. It was yeah. a big deal. I was a big shot, blue gal. I was a contender, mm-hmm. let me tell you. Okay. And, and he got up and gave out like a one hour speech with no notes. I'm sure he was paid a lot of money for this, but it was it was like a breath of fresh air. It was it was a smart person talking without notes about a really complicated, interesting subject. But his thrust was it's not just the right thing to do to provide clean water and roads and immunization for people in Africa. It's the smart thing to do. Yeah. This is the smart thing to do. Making sure everyone has insurance is the smart, selfish thing to do. Because then diseases, you know, don't pandemicize right then people are well then they go to work then you have prosperity then the entrepreneur can quit their shitty job and go off and do amazing things because they don't have to keep the job because of insurance right and and it's just exhausting talking to people who just stare at you cow-eyed and go but they're a bunch of immigrants yeah you know they're a bunch of negroes i don't want those people and you're like you know what in a, in a thousand years <laughs> you will be gone yeah you and your entire way of life, you and your entire uh, genetic lineage will be bred out of our species. But for now, you're a constant pain in my ass. So now I got to go door knock to make sure people like you don't have any more power anymore. Yep. Trump claimed that he refused a meeting with that very nice and handsome Justin Trudeau, who his wife just looks at and goes, oh, Justin, I can imagine you and I together. Uh, ahead of a self-imposed deadline of October 1st, uh, Canada says it has no idea what he's talking about and they never asked for a meeting. So, you know, he lies a lot. Tell me all about, uh, governor hedge fund request. Well, we learned this week, uh, uh to my <laughs> shock that, that, uh, governor hedge fund, Bruce Rauner is a centrist. Da, 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 da. He was front page news in our local paper. Literally front page news in the same paper that carries Ann Coulter. So and that cannot take a side on well. anything. Yeah. Do you know what the yeah. headline, governor- did you see the headline in today's paper? The day after the Dr. Ford gave her testimony and and Judge Kavanaugh shit the bed, yep. the tight the headline in big forty point font was he said she said because yep. both sides drift glass. He yep. said she said. You know yep. I can't make up my mind. Well, in the same paper, in that same paper, uh, the headline is Governor Rauner says he's a centrist while Republican Democrat party is dominated by extremes. Oh my God! Even as he struggles to unite his Republican party, <laughs> Governor Bruce Rauner who, let's remember, bought the whole fucking party out of petty cash. He bought the whole... He literally... He he funded the campaigns of every single state senator from the Republican Party personally by himself, folks. He says the state's political parties, plural, are becoming dominated by its, quote, extreme elements. And offered as proof, the (laughs) the primary challenge he faced, including one motivated by an angry GOP base, constituency of social conservatives, in a largely overlooked speech... And to no one's surprise, uh, to the Illinois Chamber of Commerce last week before the first televised debate, Runner dubbed himself a centrist, seeking, quote, moderation, as he blamed the partisan uh, the partisan drawing of political boundaries for helping fuel political divisions in a state and county with a, quote, devastating result. And, and I'm really seriously, I, David Brooks just got a boner you can see from space. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, he's a centrist. Let's go there right now. I'm already taking you know a, a quarter of the year off paid vacation on a book leave from New York Times. Why not go to Illinois and give Rauner a little hand job? Well, <laughs> and and here's the thing. This is his quiet and loud strategy. Mm-hmm. His loud part of it is to run around the state going, I'm a centrist. The extremes on both sides. He's going down. He's going down in flames. He's probably going to be beaten by six points, maybe, maybe eight. Uh, but, you know, if he doesn't, I have another speech prepared for that because I'm not stupid. <laughs> yeah, you're going to go outside and spit on the ground, right? They do it at, oh, absolutely. I'm going to run around three times and spit because of the curse from the high upon the thing. Right. But uh, but he, he when asked directly, mm-hmm. this is we covered this last week, who did you vote for in the you election? You will not say. Yep, he, will he not says, say. And I quote, uh, Raymond Shaw is the kindest, bravest, warmest, <laughs> most wonderful human being I've ever known in my life. 
And when you ask him again, he says, Raymond Shaw is the kindest. Yeah. <laughs> and he won't answer the goddamn yeah. question. Yeah. The yeah. governor, the Republican governor of the of Illinois, who owns, who owns outright the Republican Party in Illinois, will not say whether or not he voted for the Republican president of the United States. Right. We're living that in weird times. Yeah. And I want to talk about coattails for a minute. Because yeah. because this happened uh, in 2016 as well. We didn't, and, and in all of the special elections that we've had since that time, especially again primaries, the coattail phenomenon, where a popular House candidate will actually help the gubernatorial candidate. Yes, um, yes, like Florida. Like Florida, we are noticing that here in Illinois. Yes, we are. Uh, a lot of activity going on for Betsy Londrigan in the Illinois 13th district. And, uh, of course, those people are going to vote for J.B. Pritzker as, as the Democrat. Anyway. But there's not enthusiasm down here for no. J.B. Pritzker. He's going to have to depend on Democrats in Chicago winning the election for him, and that's fine. But Absolutely. you'll see this again and again, I think, in the, some of these Senate races that are close. I think that uh, the senator from Missouri, Claire McCaskill, she's not going to get a tremendous number of enthusiastic progressive vo- votes. No. No, she's but not. But progressives are going to go out and vote for those House candidates in those local races. They're not going to vote for a male Republican. I think this coattail thing is very interesting. It's an interesting phenomenon. It's bottom up, which is really kind of what you want. I mean, this really is a manifestation of, of the of mm-hmm. the Me Too movement and, frankly, bl- Black Lives Matter. And, and a lot of upsurge yeah. in people who are normally politically very quiet. Sometimes they vote, sometimes they don't, but usually kind of quiescent and, and who are extraordinarily right. activated and furious right. at what they see who are pushing up through the that's system. Right. And that's exactly the way it's supposed to work. You're supposed to conquer your local political party and then you move up the, the, the ladder and then you start taking out senators and then you run the party. That's, that's how you take over a party. And this, this was not anticipated by the people who thought that, no. you know, the permanent Republican majority was going to be built on yeah. Citizens United. You know, that it's just the opposite of that. Hey, each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Pembroke, and it's spelled Pembroke, but it's pronounced Pembroke. Pembroke takes care of Bonnie's son. Uh, Bonnie wrote and said, his love and care for my son make Pembroke worthy of celebrating by sending his photo to my favorite podcast. Love to you both, and I wish you were my neighbors. Bonnie, we wish you were, we were your neighbors too. But we're glad to talk to you, and we're glad to make Pembroke this week's Internet Kitty. But I got to tell you, uh, tell your son to brace himself, because Zeppo was Internet Kitty last week, and boy, did she lord it over everybody. It was unbearable (laughs) around this house. Unbearable. Hey, is this the food for the Internet Kitty of the week? Are you kidding me? I didn't know our cat knew words like that. Was no, she right. didn't. What? You call this a clean litter box? I'm Internet Kitty of the Week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we had a running joke all week about that. Yes. So just brace yourself or tell your son to brace himself, Bonnie, because uh, Pembroke might be impossible to live with after this week. You don't know. <laughs> don't you know who I am? <laughs> Hey, you can send your internet kitty to us if you want to take the risk. Sure. <laughs> at Go our it, email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email screed or primal scream. Or U.S. Postal Service, Go Postal Union's letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage, and I know, you know, it is pumpkin spice latte season. That's not for everybody. No. If you buy that or you buy something else when you go to the coffee shop, buy one for us by sending us a $5 contribution. This is not charity. This is our job. Please send money. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We have PayPal, a postal address. We have GoFundMe. We have Patreon. It's all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, look, Al, based on the Kavanaugh shit show, 
The internet kiddies think Dr. Christine Blasey Ford would make an excellent Supreme Court justice. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.